Business Brain, the show for entrepreneurs, episode 423 for Friday, February 10th, 2023. Greetings, folks, and welcome to or welcome back to the Business Brain show. We are the show where we take our business brains and try to apply them to all aspects of our lives because there's so much that we can all learn from each other and the way we each apply our business brains here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And I'm still out here in Lafayette, California. Just got back from Tahoe with tons of snow and it was oh, nice. amazing. And uh, yeah, drove home in a fierce snowstorm. Uh, first time in a long time. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Made yeah. It through took an extra couple hours, about five miles an hour over the oh, over the grade. Over the oh, that uh, sucks. Yeah. With the uh, what is it? The defrost on full hot to keep the window from freezing, the front window because the the uh, windshield wipers, those are called. If, yeah. I, if, if I'm correct, are just covered with ice the whole the whole way. Oh wow! Yeah, it was oh. pretty crazy. Huh. It was pretty wild. That sounds that's worse than what we usually deal with here. Uh, yeah, I, I don't I, try usually, to, I try not to drive yeah. in the snow too much. I mean, me we get snow, me but I, I try to, you know, it's like if it's snowing, I'll just avoid the drive. So yeah, yeah. 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 I try to do it too, but this time, and normally it just snows and you got the wipers on or whatever, but this time it was freezing sleet wet. Oh, super, was it right at the cusp icy. of like 32 degrees? Yeah. I, it was like sucks. 20 something or other. Yeah. yeah. And it was just, the minute it fell, it would, it would, uh, it would uh, do it. So that sucks. Yeah. It was, it was happy to, happy to get home. Hey, you know, we recently talked in episode 415, uh, I asked about GSA, the government contracts, because I got a yeah. call from somebody that wanted to sort of wanted me to pay them to walk us through that process. And we asked and Todd answered uh, if anybody knew if there was some way of like if, if this was worthwhile. And yeah, that's right. uh, Todd says. Paying someone to get you a GSA schedule is analogous to paying someone to set you up to go fishing when you have never fished. In the end, you will have all the correct fishing gear. You will understand the fundamentals on how to fish, but you will have to go out and find the location, select the correct bait for the fish you want to catch, catch the fish, skin the fish, and cook the fish all by yourself. The salesperson that called you, Dave, and relayed that they will get you a GSA schedule is glossing over all the work you or your team will have to do to truly see success. This includes the fact that they know nothing about your company, which that was clear in the conversation. Yeah. So thank you for confirming this, Todd. Yeah. Uh, he says they will know all the forms and plans to create to land a GSA schedule, but you will have to fill in all the blanks and it will take a lot of your time. Fees for all of this typically run in the ten to twenty thousand dollar range. Todd says I've been a government contractor for over twenty five years and have had experience with GSA schedule, which sold the catalog of PC components. The goal was to sell hardware to a government agency in which we had a labor and facility contract to repair PCs. This worked out very well, but the GSA schedule was open to any U.S. government agency. So we would get one-offs where some government location overseas needed a $10 keyboard that cost us $40 to ship to them. Perhaps we could have avoided that requirement, but the company who assisted us in getting the GSA schedule either did not know this or conveniently failed to tell us. In the end, this was rare and more of a hassle than a ton of money, but it's an example of the nuances to these schedules. We also had a GSA schedule for providing people and labor. They were there were defined labor categories based on education, skill area, and years of experience. In Shannon's example of a friend who was moving hardware on a GSA schedule where the cost of items fell over time, the cost of labor does not fall. GSA contracts have a two- to four-year period where you may have small escalations, but the rates are otherwise locked in, and they do not cover the wage increases your talented employees will request to remain with your company. We often ended up with an employee leaving because we could not meet their increase requests and then having the government all over us for turnover and positions not filled while we found someone else who would only stay for a year. A lot of time and frustration it was to manage. Obviously, there are many, many companies with GSA schedules who are successfully using them to make lots of money. Worth noting that they have a person or a team of people who manage the schedule for updates and compliance research all the requests for proposals, and then submit those proposals. Bottom line, 
You really need to know what you're getting into before signing a contract with someone to land a GSA schedule. I get a call every other month, he says, from a company promising me that they will get us a GSA schedule and a 30% increase in revenue. As stated above, they gloss over the details to the point where one could say they are outright lying. Todd, thank you for this. This is exactly what I was looking for. You rock. Great email. Yeah, thank you. There's a lot to unpack here. Yeah. Uh, and one, one of the things I, I, you know, right off the bat is this concept of uh, consultants and companies coming into your business without really knowing anything about it and, and making promises like that. And you, you really have to uh, flush those out. And, and I would say be very skeptical uh, of someone that's going to charge you up front to, you know, get you all the fishing gear, but uh, not get, not, not get you to the end where you're going to actually catch a fish and yeah. figure all these things out. I think you know, it's, uh, it makes me sort of sit back and think, if you are in the business of helping people do a thing, right? Like, uh, you know, a consulting business or, uh, you know, what, whatever, whatever bucket that might fall yeah. into. Oftentimes it's easy, you know what you can do. And so you go out and sell that to people. Right. And, and that's what the, the folks who called me and the folks who call, uh, you know, Todd every other month or whatever, uh, try to do for him. And, it makes me stop and think, well, wait a minute. Maybe the first question is, hey, here's a thing I can do or my business can do. I want to learn about your business to see if it makes sense for us to do this for you. And, it's a better and value approach. It's right? a better value approach. Now, yeah. of course, it requires more of your time because you as the, the business person, the salesperson, whatever, the service provider – the first thing you want to do is vet these companies before you even pick up the phone because you don't want to waste your time calling someone that you know out of the gate is unlikely to benefit from this service that you're going to provide them or going to try and sell them. So you do yeah. your vetting. Then you call them to continue your vetting, not begin the sales process. Like, you know, and I like if I got a call from somebody that said, hey, we're in the business of uh, helping people get GSA contracts or GSA schedules. Uh, but I'd like to learn more about what you do to see if it makes sense for us to do this for you. If, if that but, one yeah. line. Much would, better pitch. Oh, that pitch is like, absolutely. Uh, how much you time don't do really you really hear that? Yeah. No, you, you never don't really hear, hear that. that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Uh, that it's comes back to that, you know, adding value first. Be first. Like, well, let's. Before yes. I try to pitch you on giving me money, let me let me spend some time looking into your business to see whether I can even add value to it. Instead of just this, you know, blanket, I'm sending emails to 500 companies and and uh, going to see who you know who clicks on <laughs> who clicks on the link. Um, I, I really I like that a lot. I think it's great. Hey. If you're looking to get money for your business, we've got a show for you. Make sure you tune in to the Business Credit and Financing Show hosted by funding expert Ty Crandall. Ty has helped over 50,000 entrepreneurs get capital. And during each episode of the show, he interviews industry experts and gurus about how to easily get the capital you need to grow your business and the strategies you can deploy to grow your company faster. Ty covers topics like how to get business credit with no personal guarantee or credit check, how to get money to start a business, and how to get approved for the most money and the best terms. So if you want to tap into business credit and financing to grow faster, visit creditsuite.com and click resources and then select the podcast. Then choose your preferred platform to subscribe and listen in on previous episodes. Head there now and tell them we sent you to get your free step-by-step -step business credit building blueprint. And our thanks to Ty for doing this swap with us. Yeah, you know, this concept of providing value first, I, I think it's lost in, in, a, in, in, in a lot of yeah. the world here. You, you, there's that, you know I mean, I, I think it's pretty prevalent if you think about uh, like 
social media and well, advertising that kind of you know oh, those yeah. kinds of things that 80 20 oh i'm you know 80 percent of what you post you're sharing information and about your business oh, and this kind of thing yeah yeah but 20 percent of the time you're asking them to buy something uh and and so that maybe that it's prevalent you know, there it's it's yeah, prevalent yeah. in the the freemium model right you yeah, know sign up for right, dropbox right. you get two yep. gigs for free Mail and then Chimp, whatever it, yeah, yeah right all all of those things so it it is it's out there when it is fundamentally baked into the way the business operates from the get go or from yeah that, uh, some that's pivot. the only way you're going to succeed in those areas right yeah correct yeah yeah but yeah. in the service business in the consulting business everybody wants to bill from minute one yep and I, you know I wonder if that creates an opportunity for folks who are willing to bill from minute 31. Maybe. Right? Like, I mean, think work? about, I mean, I, think about yeah. minute 31. Like if you're willing to yeah. give away 30 minutes of your time, again, to very well vetted uh, prospects, are you going to wind up having more customer loyalty and, and in the end making more money or perhaps I should say making easier money or maybe Making money that's more pleasant to make. Yeah, building your loyalty, right? Yeah. Better referrals. You, not only you does know. the customer get to vet you before they spend a dollar, you get to vet them. Because if you're yeah. at minute 21 and you decide, uh, I don't want to work with this person ever or, again. Or, yeah, or they this haven't is just not going to work. Yeah, they right. haven't paid you yet. You owe them nothing, right? You're not on the hook. You get to walk away. When they say, oh, you know, well, uh, what about minute 32? Yeah, I don't have time for that. I got to move on to the next thing. I mean, you, you, you find ways of saying, I'd, I'd be curious to hear from you folks, uh, feedback at businessbrain.show, of course, uh, like Todd did, to, to see, has anybody, like, are you doing this in a service slash consulting business where you're, you're giving away a little bit and maybe it's not 30 minutes, maybe it's 10 minutes, maybe it's 15 minutes and and I'm 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 putting this in the confines of a build by the hour thing. Maybe there's a different, but you're not giving away. You're giving away your time. You're giving away your expertise as part of this freemium model. But I, I just I wonder is there is there a way? I mean, what we do here it on the show like is freemium. Yeah, you know. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the other the other part of this uh, of Todd's email about GSA stuff that I wanted to mention uh, or comment on was the ten dollar keyboard with the cost of forty to ship. You know, um, and it, I bring it back to a previous episode where we were talking about pricing and things like that. And I think this is another one of those good examples where hey, we we take it. You know, we don't make any money. We lose money on these when we have to ship them over. But yeah, yeah. as long as it's a, a small enough number. And it's enabling enabling you to have this larger relationship, uh, you know, although having a large relationship with the government really kind of gives me the shivers. Uh, yeah. it, that is one of those examples that, you know, certainly you'd want to do it until such time that the offset, you know, didn't didn't work anymore. Yeah. Um, but the, the one thing that Todd mentions is the cost of labor that, you know, how you bill that out and get those bids. I mean. It, it sounds so foreign to me and it just seems like it would be fraught with uh, low ballers coming in, you know, at the lowest possible point they could and then trying to squeeze money out everywhere else it, to the point where everybody to loses. pay for it. Yeah, <laughs> you know? right, right, yeah, right. Yeah. Some, it's got to give somewhere. You're either underpaying people, getting lousy talent, uh, losing money. Yeah, the, or the government's getting poor service, you know, your, your, your client, I, you know, uh, yeah, that I, idea I think, of, of, yeah. of committing to a labor rate for four years, brutal. <laughs> I, that's, that's, I mean, I, again, I haven't seen these contracts, uh, yeah. uh, of course, because I didn't pay the people to, you know, walk me down the path, <laughs> <laughs> but I, that, I mean, like no freaking way. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, there have been you, like, yeah. Just think if you'd have done it in the last four years. Oh, right. How oh, the you, whole concept of, no. of I don't know how you, how you do it. And it, I would imagine, and maybe Todd can follow up that 
the the GSA landscape must just be riddled with companies that go on have gone under chasing you know these deals and then realizing oh wow we we can't we can't make it work because I know from you know I I'm a product guy and I'm a guy that buys tons of stuff sometimes from the government you know sometimes from corporations and sure. I have to bid on products all the time and I often I, I'm I'm pretty good at it. And have done it for 30 plus years. And when I look at it, it and I ultimately, if I lose a bid, I look at that and go, there is no way they're going to make any money on that. It's just impossible, right? Right. But there's enough companies that go around where all you need is one company to come in and think, we can do it. And they buy, you know, whatever large lot of X you know, yeah. product. And then the next time, you go back and there's another one that tries it and tries it and over and over and over. And that's kind of how, you know, um, I would imagine some of this GSA stuff gets where people are very excited. They think they can hire very cheap labor or, or try to do it offshore. You know, it, it, rules, well, rules against that. I mean, that's one way. And again, we're, we're literally pulling this out of thin air because we've never yes. done it. But is the other way that everybody that, that, it, that does this knows you've got to overcharge. I mean, there's, there's a, there's a long yeah. history. Like perhaps one of the first memes ever was the idea of the government paying $20,000 for a hammer. True. And maybe it's because the people that are seasoned that have been burned the one time, or at least heard about someone who's been burned the one time come in and say, I got a massively overcharge for this because I'm locked in for yeah. you know, four years on the price of whatever it is I'm offering, so I've got to pad it with a massive amount so that I can be guaranteed, all but guaranteed, right, to make money right. in four years. Maybe that's where this comes from. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I could speculate that some of those crazy numbers come from you know large corporations yeah. that are perhaps the only ones that could do it, you know, oh, it's Northrop Grumman and one mm -hmm. other company, you know, something like that. But but I have no idea. We had a a, a government yeah. God, like a, you're better at that than uh where's what do we got to go to businessbrain.show. We do need to go to businessbrain.show. Yeah, we had that contract. God, what we, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me see if I can. What was his name? Uh, that's what I'm going to find Lloyd out. Lloyd Chapman, the founder there of the American it. Small Business League, episode 317. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, he talked that's a lot about- That's a good about, episode to listen to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go back and listen to 317. We'll put a link in the show notes. Uh, you'll see it in your podcast app or up at businessbrain.show uh, when this one posts on Friday the- uh, <laughs> The 10th. Well, it's already been posted if they're hearing it, Shannon. Yeah, so you got it. <laughs> that's it's the way it good. works. And I'm the that guy who posted it, so I should know that. the way that it works. <laughs> but yeah, Lloyd had some really interesting comments to say about how- uh, how people aren't or the government doesn't live up to giving it to all small businesses and stuff so it's a great episode yeah it is great i i i, I found that fascinating i remember sitting here in this very chair kind of with my mouth hanging as he just ranted about it and yeah he was none of it sounded false yeah exactly no, no yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm a believer yeah, yeah. same Folks, thanks for hanging out with us for the last uh, 18 minutes here. And uh, hopefully you'll choose to spend your next 18 minutes with us. Maybe you'll go listen to the interview with Boyd, Lloyd, or, or you'll listen to the next episode, 424, whatever that might be. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for sending in your comments to feedback at businessbrain.show. We are loving having all this interaction. I hope you're loving the benefits of it. And... Uh, We'll see you next week. Keep living that charmed life, huh?